Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit, and the precept that we're going to deal with today, holy before God. Sisters and brothers, we hear so much twisting of scriptures and so much false doctrine out there that talks about I'm holy, and I'm holy this, and I'm holy that. But the scripture says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. And all these false doctrine, doctrines that go contrary to the scripture, according to God, are not holy. So what we need to find out, what we need to prove in the scriptures, is what it means to be holy before God. And we're going to be brief and to the point, and we're going to start this off in 1 Peter, the first chapter. 1 Peter 1, verse 1. Give everyone a chance to get there. I go way too fast sometimes, sisters and brothers, and I appreciate reminders to slow down because it's not about me and it's not about feeding people that already know how to get there and where all the books are at and have all this understanding. It's about feeding the one that doesn't even know that there's a first Peter in the Bible. So we'll wait on everybody because it takes practice to make perfect. And the Lord said, walk perfect before me. First Peter 1, and we'll start this off, brother, if you'll start off our lesson, brother, in verse 14. 1 and 14, brother. And obedient, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in our ignorance before we proved God's word and found out the things that were pleasing to him. But as he which has called you is holy, our father is the one that draws us through Christ Jesus. Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Okay, so teach me about Christmas and Easter. No, those are traditions of men. Because it is written, be ye holy as I am holy. So to be holy in the new covenant, 1 Peter, way after Acts, the second chapter, where the new church supposedly started, which it didn't. It's written, be holy as it is written to be holy. Let's go find out where that is. First, let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter real quick. Second Peter, the third chapter. I almost got ahead of myself. Brother Mike almost had to correct me, and I know he would have. Second Peter 3 and verse 10, brother. Go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in are therein shall be burned up. So this whole earth and everything, all the works of this earth and everything, when Jesus returns, is going to get burnt up. Go ahead. 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So since we know that when Jesus returns, he's going to destroy everything, the heavens and the earth, and everything that's wicked and everything is going to be burnt up, shouldn't we then... Make sure that we're holy in all manner of conversation and godliness. As Peter said in his first letter, as it is written. Go ahead and continue, brother. 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Because we know that this is going to happen, now we should be walking holy before God. Before this happens, because we're looking for this to happen, we know it's going to happen. He's going to come back. He's going to destroy everything that's tainted and wicked and evil. That's why it's a new heaven and a new earth, because we pretty much destroyed this heaven and earth. So we know that's going to happen. Shouldn't we be holy in all conversation and godliness as it is written? Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. It's written in many places, and it's written many different ways. We're just going to read a few words straight and to the point. Exodus 19, and brother, pick it up at verse 5. Exodus 19 and verse 5. Go ahead. 
Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Go ahead. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you'll be a peculiar treasure above all the people for all the earth is mine. Because nobody else is doing it. Everybody else has their own way of worship, created their own gods, said this is the God that created us, just like Israel did when they came out of Egypt. These are the gods that brought you out of Egypt, though, Israel, and they knew it wasn't. So if you take hold of that covenant, obey his commandments, take hold of all his commandments, statutes, and judgments, and laws, then you will be a holy nation. Otherwise, you won't be. Let's go to Exodus, the 31st chapter. Exodus, the 31st chapter. Exodus 31. And brother, let's pick it up at verse 13. 31 and 13. This is an example, the Sabbath day. Go ahead, brother. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. So the Sabbath day, you've got to keep it, because it's a sign between God and his people throughout all generations, that you might know that it's the Lord God of the creation that sets you apart from other people. That you are his people. Go ahead, brother. 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone because of that, you shall keep the Sabbath because it's holy unto you. Go ahead. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Go ahead, brother. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever do any work in the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. See, who's it holy to? It's holy to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be ye holy as I am holy, as it is written. This is one of the ways it's written. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. Six Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbaths to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. In the Sabbath day, we've got a lot of lessons on the Sabbath day, but the Sabbath day is a perpetual covenant, and it's part of the covenant. The Sabbath day is a covenant within the covenant. Let's continue. Let's go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Leviticus, the 11th chapter. We're going to bounce around the book of a little bit, Leviticus a little bit, and we're going to put a sweet, quick end to this. Leviticus 11, and pick it up at verse 44, brother. Read 44 and 45, please. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. You shall, shall set yourselves apart from the rest of the world or sanctify yourselves from the rest of the world by the keeping of God's commandments. Commandments, and you shall be holy because he is holy. Go ahead. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Jesus isn't giving Moses to teach Israel anything that he's not keeping, and anything that he didn't keep when he came in the flesh. He knew he was going to keep this law perfect, that he had to do it to reconcile man to our Heavenly Father because of sin, and he's teaching you to do this. Then he comes, and he becomes physical through Mary, takes on the form of man so that he can reconcile man back to the Father as a perfect sacrifice, and he gave us an example of how to walk. He kept the law perfect. He's the Holy One of Israel. Let's go to Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus 19. And we'll pick it up at verse 1, brother. 1 and 2. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. 
For I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy, as it is written. Let's go to the 20th chapter of Leviticus. We'll pick it up at verse 7, brother. 20 and 7. Go ahead. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord, your God. Uh-huh. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord, which sanctify you. So you set yourselves apart and you are holy when you take hold of God's covenant and walk in it. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. And when you do that, when you sanctify yourself, it is God that is sanctifying or setting you apart through his commandments, statutes, judgments, and laws. Skip the 26 and we'll end it here, brother. Go ahead. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. I have severed you from other people that ye shall be mine. And when you go look at all the places where he said that the Lord God says, be ye holy as I am holy, he always gives you something to do. Keep the Sabbath day. Stay away from idols. Honor your mother and father. Don't deal with wizards and necromancers and the spirits and raising of the dead and all this other foolishness. Don't be homosexuals. He always gives you something to do to be holy. So sisters and brothers, holy before God. And as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And we hope you got something from these scriptures.